So I've heard a bunch about OpenBSD that they emphasize correctness and proactive security. And I like both of these things. They've only had two remote holes in a heck of a long time. Initially, I didn't know what that meant, but a remote hole is a vulnerability that allows someone to gain remote access to your computer. Anyways, on a whim, I decided to install it on my Raspberry Pi. So this time, since I have a bit of Linux experience from installing Arch Linux, I decided instead of following a tutorial, I would actually read the manual. And I've already run into a problem. What architecture is my Raspberry Pi? After that bit of stupidity, I figured it out. It's ARM64. On my first attempt, I didn't know what the file sets were, so I just downloaded the image without the file sets. But that ended up being the wrong choice. However, I eventually realized my folly and downloaded the correct one. The next thing to do was to check the checksums, so I copied the link and went to its parent folder, where I found the checksums. I then copied the wrong command and attempted to run it. And there we go, the checksums are correct. So this is in fact the OpenBSD installation image. Then after running this command, I had the installer on my SD card. Something which took me a few attempts to figure out was that you need two SD cards to install OpenBSD. One with the installer on it and the other which you are installing it to. Otherwise, it would overwrite itself. Well, I plugged my USB into the Raspberry Pi, and off I went. Okay, so clearly I've done something wrong. And indeed I had. There was some special magic, which I had neglected to read. So while the bootloader is loading, you must press a key to stop auto boot. Then, you must type boot. I do not know why. But it allows you later on to type boot commands. And you will need to run set ttyfb0, which redirects the graphical output to the HDMI cable. Once you've done that, you may proceed with the boot by running boot. For some reason, it hangs here until you press a key and then it suddenly starts updating the screen. But there we go, after all that, I finally got the Welcome to OpenBSD installation program. I didn't end up recording my journey through this, but I eventually got through it and put SSH into a Raspberry Pi running OpenBSD. Now, setting everything up after that was a whole different story. I discovered that its package repository doesn't have Caddy, the HTTPS web server, which was a major disappointment. I ended up using the inbuilt HTTPD. I was also frustrated with how slow it was untarballing this file compared to my personal computer. It was very slow. After about a minute and a half, I decided to just cancel the operation. However, something I was pretty chuffed with was that I got an email server up and running for the first time ever. I was pretty happy about that. <laughs> 